What is up YouTube? It's CS back here with another installment and here is my preview for episode 27 of Deadliest Warrior. This one is between Saddam Hussein and Pol Pot. Alright, now what do y'all think of this matchup? It's still crazy to me. You got two of the baddest dictators of all time in Saddam Hussein versus Pol Pot. If you have a good reason for cheering for any of these fucks, I'd like to know in the comment section below immediately. I really don't see why you have a case of having to cheer any of these psychopaths. So please, if you have any reason to, tell me. So, yeah. Let's move on, though. Let's get serious. Talk about what tests we're going to see here. I'm actually going to start off by talking about the X Factors. Now, what do we got? Pol Pot. Saddam Hussein, let's take a look at the tail of the tape, like Dr. Dorian would say. Saddam Hussein, 6'2", 215, big guy, compared to Pol Pot. What, is he like 5'9", like 190-something? Uh, not very big at all. This turns into a fist fight. Saddam wins. Not going to happen, though. They also have short-range weapons. I believe that uh, Pol Pot has the edge there with his uh, cane knife over the bayonet of Saddam Hussein. I'll get to that shit later, though, because that is weapons. But for the most part, in terms of physicality, you know, Saddam wins. But, you know, again, Pol Pot can really even the odds out with this weapon there. Again, I'll get into that later. Also, we have things like leadership. You know, I'm going to have to go with Saddam Hussein here. You know, the guy ruled longer. He was feared up until, you know, the 21st century. What can I say? You know, <laughs> Saddam Hussein was that dude in the Middle East for many years. And he was feared as fuck. And, you know, for the most part, people complied with him. And it took the U.S. to take him down. So, what can I say? You know, no one there, you know, exactly got their way with the guy. I like, you know, I like Saddam Hussein to take the leadership shit. For the most part, everyone did what they were told there. Although Pol Pot, man, to get like 16-year-old boys to like, follow you in your mission in trying to eradicate the past and make his own. That's kind of crazy. I would not be surprised if he got the leadership X Factor if there was one. Also, logistics is to be taken into consideration. Saddam had money. Gotta go with Saddam. You know, better access to almost everything if that is, you know, taken into account. You know, professional army in the Republican Guard, you know, they're legit, you know, they're what, the world's fourth most feared army, like 10 years ago, and that's just 10 years ago, you know, I like them to win in logistics, if there is a category for it, also tactics and strategy, gotta give that to Saddam, you spend that much money on, you know, arms, I would assume you know how to maximize those arms potential, and, and you're gonna have to do that with good strategizing and tactics, Gotta give Saddam the edge there if there is one. So really, I think Pol Pot's gonna get our match here just because you got a professional warrior versus 16-year-old kids. I assume that the professional warriors, you know, if you're to have the same weapons versus the same weapons and you got professional warriors leading one, I mean, having the one, and then the other guys, you know, and 16-year-old boys having the same ones, they're go they were to go at it. I think the professional ones would win like, you know, fifty five forty five. Just my opinion. I'm gonna go with the Republican Guard to match in X Factors and possibly take this match. Now, let's get on to some real tests with weapons. We of course saw the first fifteen minutes of the episode on Spike.com. We got to see, you know, a diverse array of weapons in the same test. We saw Calvin Bonley of Saddam Hussein's side. Use the RGD-5 grenade, his RPK assault rifle, and his Browning pistol. And for the most part, I think he did really well in the test. Had a decent time of 205. Had to reload with the RPK once, but for the most part, you know, he wasn't missing a heck of a whole lot. Uh, his shooting with the Browning looked good. Uh, definitely a killer instinct was displayed there. And for the most part, the RGD-5, you know, was decent, uh, decent grenade. You know, when he threw it at first took out two out of three targets and then he shot the other target with you know the with the RPK and that's another sign of killer instinct Rec recognizing that guy need, needs to be killed he wasn't killed yet so pop you know he did it so what can I say I really liked how uh, he did that test 
but that reload might hurt him. And I know on the other side with the RPD for pull pot, it might be slower to walk around with, but I think with that reload that Calvin had to do, that hurt him in time. And even though the RPD is less mobile, the guy um, on Pol Pot's side might throw up a smaller time minus the reload because the RPD has a 100 round box, you know, the 100 round ma uh, magazine, that drum. And I know it's heavier and shit, but he doesn't have to reload, so maybe he might throw up a faster time. Just saying. So just on round capacity, and I know it hits a little bit harder, I'm going to go with the RPD. I think it's going to be equally as accurate as an RPK. We'll see. I know it's more of a machine gun than an RPK, but can't be that hard to aim in my opinion. Going to go with the RPD in that edge for the assault rifle. So edge, RPD. Then you also have the browning against whatever Pol Pot's going to have. And that is the Tokarev. We saw the Tokarev in the Viet Cong episode. You know, nice stopping power, but only eight rounds. I like the browning. You know, it's stopping power for the most part. It's pretty good. And it has a 10 or 13 round magazine. I like that round capacity. I think it's equally as accurate as whatever Tokarev can put up. I like the browning on round capacity. Edge browning, Saddam Hussein. So we got one edge to one. We're going to even it out here with explosive weapons, the stick grenade of Pol Pot versus the RGD-5 that we already saw for Saddam Hussein's side. That can kill you with the shock and the frag. More frag than the stick grenade. I'm not sure if the stick grenade has any. Got to go with the RGD-5. It looked decent in the Spetsnaz or Screen Beret episode. And for the most part, from what I do understand, the stick grenade is a more, you know, archaic weapon compared to the RGD-5. I think the RGD-5 is a more robust grenade. And go with it and say it picks up the edge and explosive weapon. So we have two edges to one for Saddam Hussein. He has explosives and then he has handguns. And then of course Pol Pot has assault rifles in the RPD. Now moving on we also have short range weaponry. I already mentioned you know Saddam being the more menacing of the two when it comes to physicality. But Pol Pot could easily even the odds there with uh, what he has in the cane knife. For the most part, the cane knife, blade on blade, is better than whatever Saddam, was pa Saddam is packing, which is going to be a bayonet. You know, the bayonet, shorter blade, and you're basically trying to spear or slice someone with that thing at the end of your gun, uh, the, at the end of your RPK. I think that's a little clumsy. It, it's not my weapon of choice when it comes to a close range weapon. If I had to pick one of the two, I have to go with the cane knife. You know, it's you know, it's a better short-range killer, period. I know it was made for chopping up, you know, sugar cane and shit, but it's just a better weapon than the bayonet. You have more weapons like that kill more people than bayonets do. So I'm going to say cane knife and short-range weapons. So now we're even 2-2 two, two in edges. So, y'all, what we got is... Saddam Hussein, in my opinion, dominating the X-Factors, and he has the edge in handguns with his Browning over the Tokarev and the RGD-5 grenade over the stick grenade of Pol Pot, and then we have Pol Pot taking the edges in assault rifles with his RPD over the RPK and his short-range weapon in the cane knife over the bayonet. So they're even weapon on weapon. But I think Saddam Hussein's, you know, X-Factors make the difference for him here. You know, I believe that the RPD is going to be, you know, almost a game changer for Pol Pot. But I don't think it's enough because I don't think he, you know, the dudes on his side have enough experience. I'm not sure how good he is of, um, you know, a leader in terms of war to be able to lead these fucks into, you know, Saddam Hussein, who's been revered for how many years now. So i got to go with Saddam Hussein. More experience, and for the most part, I think the Republican Guard, you know, is just a better army. And I say, I just think that um, X factors are going to be a big factor into why they win this battle. You know, it's just, you know, this is the one battle that I see them, you know, X factors really mattering here. And I just, I don't see these 16-year-old boys with, you know, with this heat 
of the RPD just being able to outpower these professional warriors with RPKs and whatever. I just don't see them just I don't see them ransacking through the Republican Guard. I gotta go with Saddam Hussein and Republican Guard. I think he's gonna win like a 53-47 decision. Something like that. 53, 53% out of 5,000 kills. That's my pick. Saddam Hussein over Pol Pot. Although it wouldn't shock me if Pol Pot were to win this with that cane knife. But I think we're gonna see Saddam Hussein either shoot Pol Pot in the visual sim with the handgun, with the browning, heater like that, pop, or he's probably going to use that bayonet and stab him in the chest and go up or something like that, something nasty like that, we'll see. Again, I'm not cheering for anyone, but my edge here has to go to Saddam Hussein, that's my pick. So tell me who your pick is and why. Tell me if you're crazy enough to cheer for any of these guys. So I guess that about does it. I'll see y'all for a review next week after the episode airs. Please enjoy the episode. Again, thank you for all the support. Please follow me on Facebook, Tumblr, or Twitter if you guys have that shit. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And in the near future, I will have contests up for this Deadliest Warrior stuff. So stay tuned for that as well. Again, thank you for all the support. You guys are awesome, and I will see you in the near future. So take care.